Hey, come here. So you got an Osmo Pocket 3 and you have no clue how to set it up for, come here, cinematic filmmaking. Oh, I'm about to show you how to do this. Let's go. What up, y'all? Tight shirt here, Wolf, and I'm back for another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that. This is my third time filming this freaking video creator stuff, okay? Let's hop right into it. We're gonna set up our Osmo Pocket 3 for cinematic filmmaking. I know I'm probably making some of y'all mad with that word cinematic, but it is what it is. First thing we need to do is grab our Osmo Pocket. If you have one, if not, I'm sorry you didn't get yours yet. And we need to go ahead and turn it on. That's important. Can't forget that step, right? We need to do some housekeeping stuff before we actually go through and set up all of our custom settings. So pull down this shade from the top. This is where the majority of this first part is gonna take place at. It doesn't matter if this is in vertical or landscape, that part is up to you. And we need to switch a few things around. So the first thing I need you to do is go into the screen record and capture menu. And we're gonna set this to video. Now, Basically what the screen does is controls what happens when you rotate the screen to power on the camera and what mode that it launches. We wanna make sure that this is in video. Go ahead and back out of this menu, go back into the shade. Now you see the third option down on the right hand side. This controls our automatic rotation of our frame rates and resolutions based on where the screen is, right? We wanna make sure this is set to automatic. I will explain why in a little while. The next thing I want you to do is go to this little dude in the lower left hand corner and this changes how fast or slow the gimbal rotates. Now if we want to get like you know that super slow cinematic sauce we want to put this on slow. It's by default on default or you can move it over to fast if you're capturing something fast moving. Let's just go ahead and put it on slow and there's one other thing I want you to change in the settings menu right here. Let's go ahead and press that and then let's go all the way down to joystick speed, okay? So this controls how fast or slow it zooms in and out or rotates the gimbal. I think it's a little fast right out the box. So I changed mine to four for zoom, two for gimbal movement. Let's go ahead and hit confirm. And the next thing that we need to do is in the lower left-hand corner, let's press this and make sure that we are set to, come on, come on, video, okay? Now, I had you put it on auto rotation for a very specific reason because based off of how the screen is rotated, that dictates what options that the camera's gonna give us when it comes to frame rates and resolutions. So if we rotate it this way, the camera's now gonna present us with landscape options instead of portrait options. And Terry, why is this important? Well, when we go to set up our freaking custom settings, it's gonna save that also, which is huge. So let's go ahead and start with that. I wanna go ahead and set up a vlogging style preset or custom profile. And the reason that we want custom profiles is because we don't want to be out and about and having to fumble through all of these freaking settings. So custom profiles will allow us to pick a specific group of settings and we can have up to five of those. So I'm going to set up one for vlogging and general image capture. Then I'm going to set up another one for like slow-mo. I'm going to show you how to do these. You can set up however many that you freaking want to. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is swipe up from the bottom to get access to our frame rates, aspect ratios, and resolutions. Since we have auto rotate turned on and the screen is in landscape, we're gonna get landscape options. So we're gonna get a 16 by nine aspect ratio option or we could do one to one. Notice we didn't get a nine by 16. That would only happen if I rotated the screen vertically. Now I got my aspect ratio picked. I want that 16 by nine. Their next thing is resolution. We got 1080p, 2.7K and 4K. Obviously I'm gonna use 4K. And even though I'm a 24 FPS kind of guy, I gotta roll with all the new teeny boppers. They prefer everything and they view most of the stuff we make and 30 FPS, so we're gonna go with 30 FPS. That's all set, let's get out of this menu. The next thing I need to show you is in the upper right hand corner, I don't know if you can freaking see that, but that says negative three EV. EV stands for exposure value. That tells us is that the camera thinks that the image is either too dark, evenly exposed, or too bright. So as a rule of thumb, we typically wanna make sure that this meter shows us 0.0. .0. Now in auto, it will always say 0.0, .0 because the camera is making sure that you're getting a balanced, colorful, image and video that you could just spit out and share, right? But we don't want that. We wanna take control over the camera to get what we want. Now that I have that out the way, next thing we need to do is go into our shade from the right-hand side. And this is gonna give us access to all of our exposure and all that stuff. Now, by default, this is gonna be set to automatic. And again, that's okay if you just wanna, you know, not miss the moment. You don't wanna mess with settings and all that stuff, but we gotta take the trainer wheels off, y'all. We gotta put on the big girl panties and go ahead and turn on Promo. So bam, press that button. 
the button turns yellow and now we have access to all of our exposure color options so let's run through these real quick so first thing i want to do is go through white balance okay now this is set to auto by default and the reason white balance is important is because you don't want the color temperature of your video changing mid shot because if you leave it on auto that's gonna happen and that is very difficult to correct inside of a clip when the white balance changes now usually to get an accurate white balance people carry around a great card some cameras have presets built into them well this doesn't but i'm going to show you an easy way to get at least a semi-accurate white balance now you can typically trust the camera to get a decently accurate white balance so if we go ahead and press on white balance right here notice that right now because i have it on auto and the gimbal is moving around it's telling me what it thinks the white balance is and that is good because if you are in a situation and you don't know what the white balance is here's an easy way that you can figure it out once it tells you that hey this is 4600 kelvin put it on manual leave it there and you want to do this before every single clip unless you just want the whole video to have one white balance now i'm not going to save this because i will only save this as if i were in like a studio setting and the white balance doesn't change i don't want to be out in the field and it's a sunny day and all of a sudden my white like my image is looking all blue because i got it set to 2700k no but i wanted to show you how to do that i'm going to go ahead and put this back on auto white balance hit confirm the next thing we want to do is tackle our color profile now this has normal color profile profile which is 10 bit even though it doesn't say it in here i asked dji to send me proof okay they sent me a data chart that shows that the normal color profile is freaking 10 bit i don't care what nobody tell you i'm telling you this so normal color profile okay that's the camera doing everything for you hlg is a hdr 10 bit color profile we don't want to use that you can but i don't we're going to go ahead and switch it to d lock m that's going to give us a flat 10 bit image that we can work with it's going to give us the most color grade and ability so go ahead and do that make sure glamour effects are freaking turned off we don't want that on image adjustment this is going to let you pick how much sharpness that you want and how much noise reduction you want i don't like how sharp the image is out the osmo pocket and i think the noise reduction is a bit too heavy so i have mine set to negative one negative one let's go ahead and hit confirm and last thing before we hit exposure and audio is focus mode we want to leave this on continuous okay let's go ahead and tackle exposure at the top hit that and by default it's going to be on auto whoa 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 editor terry right here pause this okay can... i need to explain to you what this is on the left hand side so even though the camera is set to auto as you can see i can still scroll through these ev values on the left hand side of the screen and this is called exposure compensation and the long and short of it is this is a way for you to place a bias on the decisions that the cameras allow to make terry what does that mean okay so let's just say for whatever reason maybe a creative reason i have the camera set to auto but i wanted to make make the image a little darker than it typically would for maybe i just wanted to look moody or something like that okay i would then move this to maybe negative 0.3 ev and what that tells the camera is hey all the decisions that you make i need you to make them darker by negative 0.3 ev so on and so forth so you can come up with a thousand reasons why you would use this but this is what exposure compensation does it allows you to create an exposure bias for the things that the camera is allowed to control okay back to the video now again, we don't want that, we wanna take control. So we're gonna flip this over to manual. There's this thing called the 180 degree shutter rule. And basically what it does is gives us the most natural amount of motion blur that we would typically see with our own eyes. Because if you let the camera pick it and it's bright outside, it's gonna crank the mess out the shutter. It's gonna give you a really digital looking image. So the 180 degree shutter rule says we need to have our shutter speed double our frame rate or close to it as possible to get the most natural looking motion blur, which is necessary if you want it to be cinematic. So because I picked 4K 30, I'm gonna go ahead and pick one over 60. And this screen is so jumpy from this angle. One over 60, oh my look stay there one over 60 okay so our frame rate is 30 our shutter speed is one over 60 and the column on the right hand side is our iso now if you don't know what iso is i want you to think about it like your car stereo when you want the music to get louder what do you do you crank the volume up it makes it louder but you can't crank it up too far because then it gets noisy well iso does the same thing it is increasing the sensitivity of the sensor it'll make the image brighter but if you crank it too much it will get noisy now the osmo pocket can go up to ISO 3200 and obviously ISO 3200 is the noisiest. If you go into low light mode, it can crank past that before this example say, we're just gonna leave it 
to 100. The other thing I want to show you real quick is although there are preset values in here, obviously we want to go with the lowest one possible to get a zero exposure. There are also ISO ranges, and these are useful if you're out doing like vlogging and you don't want to keep, you know, adjusting the freaking camera. Every time there's a small change to the lighting outside, well, it's okay in those situations to allow the Osmo Pocket to adjust the ISO. I just like to put kind of like gates around it. I don't want it going from 50 all over to 3200. I usually keep mine on 50 to 1600, okay? But for this example, let's go ahead and set it back to 100. You can set this up however you want to. Like I told you, the screen is super jumpy. Let's go ahead and hit confirm. Now, what may happen, now that we have that set up, because our shutter speed is a 60th of a second, that allows a whole lot of light into the camera, okay? And that means that we're gonna need to introduce some ND filters to the mix because our Osmo Pocket does not have an aperture that we can freaking adjust. The problem is, is you can't get the freaking ND filters anywhere anyways. Freewell will be selling them and hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on some. So make sure you bookmark this video when you finally get them. Until then, unfortunately, you just gonna have to deal with a crank shutter. There's nothing I could do if you don't have ND filters. And I mean, it is what it is. So the other tab we need to go into real quick is our audio tab. Now our audio is gonna let us select whether we have it in stereo or mono, whether we have wind noise reduction turned on and the directionality if you're using the internal microphone. Now, if you plug up a DJI mic or any mic for that matter, you'll get extra options in this menu. Go through, customize them however you think they need to be. Okay, you don't want your audio peaking or anything like that. And then we're gonna go through and save everything to a custom profile. So I got 4K30 set up, I got my frame rate, aspect ratio, resolution, I got my shutter speed, image adjustment, all that stuff is dialed in. Let's go ahead and freaking save this now. So let's pull down the shade and we're gonna hit this dude in the upper left hand corner. Bam, save the C1. As you see, this retains everything. So video, 4K, 16 by nine. Y'all remember setting this stuff up? 30 frames per second. D log M, auto white balance, plus all of our image adjustments and our sound profile confirm. So now when I wanna go out and make some 4K 30 content for vlogging or general purpose, hit the mode button in the lower left hand corner. Now you can see there's a C1 button down there. We're gonna press that and C1 is right here. So we can quickly set that. Now, that's only one profile. Let's say I wanna go out and set up a slow-mo profile or like a 4K 60 profile. I'm gonna do the same freaking thing. So pull up from the bottom, switch it over to 4K60, go into the exposure menu, change my shutter speed to double my frame rate. So I'm gonna go to one over one twentieth of a second, hit confirm, and by the way, our image probably gonna be dark because we just cut out a whole bunch of light, but to save this preset, do the same thing. Pull down the shade, hit the dude in the upper left-hand corner, and we're gonna save this to C2. Bam, I got two profiles set up just like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could set this up for 4K 120 with a custom profile, or if you wanna set up vertical profiles so that you have vertical ones also, all you gotta do is rotate the screen because we have it on auto rotate and go through the same process you just did. You can save up to five custom presets. And that is how you get the best image out of your Osmo Pocket 3. Now stay tuned to the next video because I'm gonna show y'all how to color grade the D-Log M footage out of the Osmo Pocket 3 because it will need to be color graded because it's a flat image. Anyways, we went through a whole lot of information. I threw a whole lot of stuff at you and I hope that you gained something from this video and I hope this top angle was in focus because man, it's been a struggle getting this recorded. Anyways, till next time I'm out of here. Peace and chicken research here, Warfare. I'm out. Peace.